Nine wants to know why liens are going on the homes of patients who did everything right. I work, I'm a single mother. I have, you know, mortgage, so it's hard. Right. Liens all over the Denver area. But there's nothing I can do. All for common emergency surgeries. We had no idea we were being completely blindsided by all this. We spend months tracking court cases, property records, lawyers, doctors, and patients. I was actually relieved to hear that I wasn't the only one that this has been happening to. We found a pattern that has legislators promising change. I was shocked that this is legal. It happened to them. You don't ask, you know, as you're being wheeled into the operating room, oh, are you in my network for my health insurance? And if you have insurance, it could happen to you too. Should doctors be putting liens on homes? The doctors are utilizing the current system. This story starts with a phone call, a tip. But there's nothing I can do. A tip about a home, that home down there. I got taken advantage of. The home owned by Nicole and Jeff Briggs. There's a right and a wrong, yeah. and uh, this is definitely the wrong. A few years ago, Nicole went here, Swedish Medical Center for a suspected appendicitis. Told them I was coming, verified they took my insurance. A few years later, the appendectomy resulted in a lien on their home. We had no idea we were being completely blindsided by all this. Think of a lien like a legal claim to a property that forces the owner to pay off a debt before selling or refinancing. It's an aggressive move used to get people to pay delinquent taxes, child support, or in this case, a $4,700 medical bill, not from the hospital, but from the surgeon. The hospital took my insurance, but the doctor did not. Not that they knew that. No one here bothered to tell them, hey, you know that on-call surgeon working that night? Nope, doesn't take your insurance. He's out of network. Oh, and by the way, when he does charge you, he's going to demand. He just sent us to collections. Yeah. That was it. Demand, thanks to this lien, an amount five times what Medicare would pay. So now we have to pay off somehow this debt to figure this out. And we found more. They put a lien on your home. Yep a lot more. You followed the rules. I did. And you still... Still ended up in court, still ended up in collections, still ended up with a lien on my house. Liens sometimes placed so quietly, not even the owner knew it was there. What did you think when I told you there was a lien on your place? I said, wow, I had no idea. Each placed to try to settle four-figure debts owed to surgeons who performed unplanned surgeries. Uh, appendicitis found out in otherwise in-network hospitals. The surgeon was billing out of network, yeah. The doctor that performed the surgery was out of network. More than a dozen surgeons working in at least eight Colorado hospitals, all tied to one collections company, Colorado Springs-based Credit Systems, Inc. We searched metro area county records and found more than 170 liens placed by Credit Systems since the start of last year. Liens like the one. I had a lap coli. Uh, my gallbladder removed. The one placed on Melody Montano's home. You don't ask, you know, as you're being wheeled into the operating room, oh, are you in my network for my health insurance? As was the case with the others, her surgeon was out of network. Her insurance company paid him this much and then told her she'd have to pay this much and then told the surgeon right there, Melody should not be liable for additional charges. Didn't stop the doctor from sending her a bill for the rest. I work, I'm a single mother, I have you know, mortgage, so, yeah. Unable to collect on the debt. It's hard. Credit Systems put a lien on her home. You had to come up with a way to pay this off mm -hmm. on your own. Sorry. You, no, it's okay. Yep. It affected a lot. A national database of insurance claims, Fair Health, says the average in-network payment for a gallbladder removal in Colorado, $1,233. The average out-of-network payment for the surgery, $2,600. Her surgeon wanted her and her insurance company to pay more than double that. It affects your whole life, it affects your credit, it affects everything. And even though the debt is now paid in full, Credit Systems has yet to pull the lien. Why? We can't say. Hi, Ruth. Uh, this is Chris Vanderveen. The company has yet to respond to any of my inquiries. As for Nicole, the lien on her and her husband's home is now older than their firstborn child. They'd love to move, 
the can until the lien is paid in full. You're just like, well, I'm here to tell you that I feel like I don't owe it. And they're like, no, 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 you owe it. How are you going to pay that? That's yeah. it. That's it. That's all there is to it. We wanted to know what Nicole's surgeon, Dr. Emmett McGuire, thought of the lien on the home of his former patient. So we stopped by his office. I'm looking for Dr. McGuire. Um, they are in meetings all day. Okay. Can I give a message for him? Sure. Nothing. Texted him. Nothing, no response. And finally, when I did reach him on a cell one day, Dr. McGuire, he wanted nothing to do with me, even threatened to block my number, something Nicole might now like to do to his collections company. Over the summer, it started garnishing her wages. After court fees and interest, she now owes even more for a surgery done by a surgeon she never knew, never chose. I hope you're happy. Like, I hope you had something great you could spend this $6,000 on. You know, I mean, because it's ruined our lives. So, how does this all work? What are the odds you might get caught up in it? Maybe this will help. Consider it a curious game of odds, numbers, and chance. Visit a hospital these days, and you too might find yourself playing. Here's how. Say you're insured, and the hospital is in network with your health insurance. You're good, right? Not necessarily. What about the ER doc? Going to have to or that surgical assistant? Or that surgeon who's about to extract Here we go. your badly infected appendix? Months later, you might learn that surgeon was not in network. Now wants thousands. Thousands your insurance never paid. Turns out not all people who work in hospitals work for hospitals. Some are essentially subcontractors, free to take whatever insurance they choose. Some choose not to accept any insurance and are thus free to demand whatever they believe they're worth. Some seek less while others want more, sometimes a lot. Sometimes your insurance will pay all of it, sometimes some of it, and sometimes none of it, leaving you to pay the rest. Here's why this matters. This year, the federal government concluded four out of 10 of all Americans could not afford to immediately pay off an unexpected $400 bill. Surprise bills we've seen from out-of-network surgeons, for example, often run at least 10 times that. And people who won't, can't pay, find themselves facing collectors willing to sue, garnish wages, and place liens on homes to ensure payments. Game, indeed turning any unexpected hospital visit into the equivalent of a trip to a casino on the Vegas Strip. So if patients are losing, who's winning? What would you say to the people who owe $14,000? Today's Wednesday, April 18th. Around here. We only have one bill on our agenda for today. You might consider necessity the mother of dissension. But this bill is not the answer. For years, Colorado patients have told legislators of the need. It must have been a mistake. The need for more protection from surprise medical bills. In December, I received a notice from a collections company. Since 2015, not once. That motion fails four, five. Not once has any surprise billing legislation made it out of committee. No, that Already fails three to this two. This bill isn't necessary right now. Fails on a vote of three to two. And on to the Senate floor, a failure that continues to result in consequences for people like. I'm actually studying to be a nurse. Like nursing school student, Emmy Kame. I'm not sure. I have a feeling of uncertainty right now. That's really not a good place to be. When we met her inside the Adams County Courthouse, she owed more than $10,000 to Dr. Emmett McGuire. The surgeon that performed the surgery was out of network. Out of network, working inside North Suburban Medical Center, a hospital she chose because it was in network with her insurance. When she couldn't afford to pay Dr. McGuire, his collections company sued her before offering her in the courtroom's hallway a deal she had no choice but to refuse. They wanted $500 a month in payment. Or more than her part-time job pays. There's no way I can pay $500 a month right now. The attorney suing her is Ruth Sharp, 
She works for a collections company known as Credit Systems Inc., a company with an eagle grasping cash on its website. When people don't pay, Sharp has placed liens on homes, more than 170 since the start of last year. We spent months trying to ask her questions. Can I ask you just about some balanced billing laws in the state of Colorado? I cannot talk to you about any cases I am involved in. I'm not asking you about cases. I'm asking about the balanced billing law in the state of Colorado. When we found her in the courthouse, we tried to ask a few more. Are you familiar with the law? Ruth, are you familiar with the law? I'm not talking to you. Why are you not talking to us? Ruth, why can't you talk to us? So she wouldn't say why she sues on behalf of so many surgeons. But we know this, in the state of Colorado, the law lets her do this. She could sue you for thousands, put a lien on your home, all for a surgery done inside a hospital you chose. A surgery done by a surgeon who you had no way of knowing didn't take your insurance. But consumers are the ones that are really hurt by this. Republican State Senator Bob Gardner has twice co-sponsored legislation to protect patients from so-called surprise bills. Consumers are often caught in the middle. Senator Hill? No. Senator Jones? Yes. Last session, his most recent bill died on a three to two vote in committee. No, that Why? Three to two. He replied by offering a who. If the Colorado Medical Society supports the legislation that you had last year, does it get passed through the, through the committee? I think that's likely. Yes, the Colorado Medical Society, or CMS, the state's largest organization of doctors, some of whom continue to aggressively go after out-of-network bills. Gardner's Democratic co-sponsor was even more blunt about CMS's role. Who killed your bill last year? CMS. Representative Denea Esker says the problem remains a problem because those in power like where they are. If you start to shake anything up too much and you threaten that profitability one way or another, a lot of people stand up and say, no way. Last session, CMS spent $200,000 lobbying Colorado legislators. It's contributed 80 grand to the re-election campaigns of the 14 senators who have killed surprise billing legislation. It has a strong voice around here a stronger one than their patients, says Esker. They have more money to pay more people to be here to talk to more legislators. And they like talking to legislators. Absolutely. Why is nothing happening? I think nothing is happening because of the politics involved. CMS attorney John Conklin insists CMS wants a solution here, just not the solution suggested last year. I'd say that the bill was introduced very late in the session, and it didn't accomplish what the Medical Society would like to see accomplished on this issue. When asked what CMS would support, he said legislation that keeps patients away from surprise bills by forcing insurance companies to pay surgeons directly something insurance companies will likely fight because they'll likely have to pay more. Yes. And that is something Kame knows all too well herself. She offered Sharp 100 a month, all she could afford, she said. Sharp said no. And she said that would take 12 years. And there was no, like, I guess that was too long for them. <laughs> She now faces what others in Colorado have faced for years, wage garnishments, maybe even a lien on her home. Are those people just out of luck because the legislature and the medical society and insurance companies can't figure this out? They're just out of luck? Those people are caught in a complex, very unfortunate situation. Should doctors be putting liens on homes? The doctors are utilizing the current system uh, that we have. So some legislators saw a report and say next year might be the year things change. More on that soon. Also soon, what do people who run these places have to say about the docs who work within their walls? Swedish Medical Center hoping, expecting to get better. Pretty much knew right away what it was, appendicitis. He laughed, never envisioning. Yeah, I assumed it was some kind of mistake. The visit would result in a lien on his Littleton home. You have insurance, you have an emergency, it should be taken care of. Emmett Malone's insurance covered the hospital bill, but no one told him the on-call surgeon had no contract with his insurance. And so when Malone's insurance decided to pay her a fraction of the total bill,
The surgeon's billing company billed Malone for the balance. I honestly didn't know that was even possible. And when Malone refused to pay nearly four grand, a collections company sued him and eventually placed this lien on his home. Apparently that's what they're allowed to do, which is crazy. Why would a surgeon working in their hospital not accept the same insurance plans they accept? We asked Swedish. They refused to say on camera. We did manage to ask the same question of the Colorado Hospital Association. Unequivocally, hospitals want to find a solution to this problem. Catherine Mulready says most hospitals don't employ most of the doctors who work within their walls. They work independently and thus are free to accept or not accept whatever insurance they choose. An issue, she says, leaves even the hospitals unaware of who is in network and who is not. I don't know that we have any um, ability to track that kind of thing. It, certainly not the ability to track it in any sort of real time. Um, so we don't know actually how big that problem might be. Should you try to figure it out? It's not information that we have access to. What we did have access to is this. At Swedish, five of the seven doctors who work inside this emergency general surgery and trauma department have used the same collections company that's placed liens on a lot of homes. By nine wants to knows count, more than 170 homes since the start of last year, including the lien on the home of Emmett Malone. I was actually relieved that, to hear that I wasn't the only one that this has been happening to. To make matters more perplexing, Swedish is owned by Health One, and Health One has a company policy to not place liens on property or garnish wages for payment. So to review, the same hospital that says it's not gonna put a lien on your home to get you to pay a bill, seemingly has no problem giving privileges to a physician that will use a collections company that's gonna do just that. Got it. Should we not require hospitals to say, if you're going to work in our hospital, you have to agree to take our in-network rates. State Senator Bob Gardner is contemplating authoring a law for the next legislative session that would do that. And it's not just Swedish. We found surgeons billing out of network at other Health One hospitals, as well as Centura hospitals. Our lien list includes bills from at least eight metro hospitals. Don't you owe that to your patients? to know more about what's taking place within your wall? There's just too many variables, and hospitals don't have insight into that any better than the patient does. Curious to know if even the surgeon who worked on Malone's appendix was aware of what her collections team was doing, I called her. You have reached the Office of the Emergency General Surgery and Trauma Doctors of Swedish Hospital. She, like almost every doctor I've called about this subject for months, never called me back. As for Malone, not long after we informed the state's division of insurance, the state informed him in this letter that he no longer owed the four-figure bill. His insurance would reprocess the claim and pay the full amount. This shouldn't be this hard. No, the whole system is, it's crazy. We reached out to a representative of Swedish Medical Center. All it would tell us, quote, we strongly encourage independent physicians to participate in the same insurance networks as we do, but ultimately those negotiations occur between the individual providers and insurers, not hospitals. So we get it. This didn't just happen to people like Nicole and Jeff and Emmy and Emmett. How do we know that? Because since our first story aired on this in November, you've emailed us with your stories of out of network billing woe. Stories from people like Evelyn, Daryl, Amy and Greg, Peggy, Pat, Julie, Teresa, Tanya, Jane, Liz, Brenda, Shelly, Lisa and Marty, Ashley, Scott. Hmm kind of makes you wonder who it's not happening to, right? And guess who we've also heard from? Legislators like Democrat and the next Speaker of the Colorado House, Casey Becker. No consumer should be unfairly surprised by unanticipated costs and left with limited options to address them. We appreciate the work of Nine News to highlight this. Republican State Senator Don Quorum told us, quote, this is something that I was not aware of. It's certainly wrong. Thank you for doing this. Both said the 2019 session could be the session something finally passes. We're going to keep them to that, checking in on campaign donations and monitoring lobbying efforts. If someone's going to try to kill legislation, they better be prepared to answer our questions. 
on camera. Speaking of on camera, not one doctor or surgeon who actually sends these bills has agreed to go on camera with us for an interview, not one. So here's one final challenge. If you're a doctor or surgeon who sends these bills and thinks it's okay, thinks it's legitimate, go on camera with us, talk to us. You can contact me directly at chris at 9news.com. That's my email address, my direct line, 303-871-1848. Commit to an on-camera interview. Answer our questions. Defend your position. This should be defensible, right? Oh, and one more person will be watching closely in 2019. Senator Michael Bennett. He's attached his name to a federal effort to end what we've been talking about for months. Look, if people know and can plan for it, that's one thing. But if it's completely unplanned for and there's not any requirement that anybody tell them whether they're in network or out of network and whether they ought to make a decision to do one thing or another, I think, I think you're going to create a situation that's not only deeply unfair, but where you're going to find people with their uh, wages garnished uh, because of these kinds of uh, outcomes, and that shouldn't be the case. And of course, if this has happened to you, we would love to hear from you. Show us your bills at 9news.com. That's show us your bills at 9news.com. Producer Katie Wilcox and I go through every single one of those emails. Every one. Those emails are what keeps this investigation going. For all of us here at 9 News, thanks for watching.